right, here it is. My 50s Wilkinson T-style guitar kit from Stu Mag. Finally getting around to opening it at Christmas. It's really the first nice day of spring so far. And I am looking to get this kit started. So here it is. I'm going to go ahead and open it up now. All right, I just got the lid open to the box. Let me take off this protective sheet here. Look at that. There's my information. Instruction manual. Neck. Body. Bake light pick guard. Must be something going on out there today. Wouldn't be a nice spring day without sirens. What's in here? Ooh. Tuners, electronics, neck plate. Looks like that. I got, I got everything I need here. Just a little slip stick. All right. Let's get this neck opened up. Do it one handed here with the camera. So I will say, I am not super thrilled with this headstock. All the pictures showed it had a Fender style, Telecaster style, T style headstock. I got it, and I guess I got a kit after they had to change that style. I'll do with it what I'm gonna do. It's not gonna hurt the way it plays, but I would have liked an actual Fender. Telecaster style headstock. Here it is. Red ends are a little sharp. I'm gonna have to smooth that out some. Overall, the neck feels nice and smooth. Like it's been sanded pretty well, finished well. Let me get this out of the way. Pull this body out. Here it is. Beautiful. Is that two piece? Two piece alder body. This is where the pick guard came. It was taped on there with some masking tape. Let's see, this was made January 2020. Imagine the necks around the same time. No. 21. 272. 242. I'll have to check if they fit nicely. I wonder if I've got to modify anything. Those ferrule holes are nice and straight. They look like they're all countersunk to around the same depth. Not too bad. Seems a lot better than a lot of those cheaper kits out there. I know. I hear a lot of people saying not to buy this kit. I'll be honest. It came with everything I wanted. 450 style Telecaster kit. The only thing I wish I could have done is I wish there was an option for an ash body. And that way I could have gone with a butterscotch or... You know, a blonde translucent finish. Instead, I'm going to be going with something a little brighter. No transparency to it. Still kind of trying to figure out what finish I'm putting on it, but I'm going to, go, going to most likely go with a solid color. I'm going to be doing this all aerosol cans. Just to show you guys you can do something like this without any crazy tools. You, know, you can do this in your backyard, garage, shed, basement. I'm gonna start this outside. I'd like to get this sanded a little bit better in some certain areas. And then I'll go ahead and give it a coat of some sanding sealer I got from Stumac. 
I'll be back with that later. All right, I'm back, and uh, I have went over this entire guitar body with some 320 grit sandpaper. Like I said, it does come pretty smooth. There were a couple slight, slight scratches in the body. So, like I said, I took some 320. I did block it. Um, guys, make sure when you are using your sandpaper to smooth this out, you're going with the grain. All right, you never want to rub across the grain. Make sure you go with the grain. That'll make sure everything's smooth when you're ready to apply your finishes. Um, you do want to get inside this horn area. I did notice that it wasn't wasn't to my satisfaction from the factory. I'd spent a little more time there and up right here. Other than that, it looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> I'm going to hit it with some naphtha. And then I'm going to apply some sanding sealer. All right, now I'm ready to get that naphtha. I just went to Home Depot, got some Strip Clean VMP naphtha. This is some really good naphtha here. Um, and what this is going to do is going to get rid of any of the, the oils that might be left on this guitar, I'm either handling it, just from shipping, or any of the crap left from the tape that was sticking that pick guard to the body here. Uh, you want to clean it really good before you start putting any finish work on the body. Uh, you want things to adhere properly. So again, I'm just going to take this rag here. I'm going to apply liberally some naphtha, rub it all over the guitar, and make it nice and smelly out here. All right, this is where I'm going to attempt to put some sanding sealer on this guitar. I'll show you right here. About the color tone guitar lacquer sanding sealer from Stu Mac. I have not used this before. Um, planning on using mostly color tone products in this finish here. Just because it's readily available. I really like the uh, nitrocellulose finishes on guitars. I'm actually going to try to do a light, light relic on this guitar once it's completed. But even if you're not going to relic, um, nitrocellulose lacquer is just a really nice thin finish. You get some good tone out of the guitar. And this is not, I mean, I'm not getting paid to use this at all. You can tell. I'm not. And this is just an outdoor finish here I'm going for. Uh, but this is what I'm going to use. I want you to heavily agitate this. I don't know if you can notice the bottom of this can here, but I sat here for about five minutes. And they say that, well, someone told me in my younger days that when you're using aerosol, unless the bottom looks beat up, you're not ready yet. And it looks like it's been beat up. You can see the agitator marks all over the bottom of the can. So let me go ahead and go at spraying this guitar. All right, so I did not get a video of that last first coat of sanding sealer here. Uh, I just warmed up this can once again in some hot water. Uh, the nitrocellulose doesn't always flow great uh, if it's not hot. So I figured I'd do that and see if I could get a better coat on here. I'm going to attempt to get a little video of how I'm applying this. I am making sure this can is vigorously shaken. And when you spray, you're going to spray 12, 14 inches away. And you're going to start from one side to the next. You're going to overlap the guitar body by a few inches. And every coat, you're going to give one third of a coat overlap. Let me go ahead and try to do this here. All right, you're gonna to continue to do that on both sides of the body. Get into the contours, get around the sides. And that is just one missed coat. I'll do about three of those to make up one coat of finish. All right, these next three pictures show some of the process of marking off the screw holes for the neck to neck pocket area. Make sure you tune in for my next episode.